How is it now? Okay, that's good. Thank you. Um, so thank you everyone who has stuck around and I'm going to be cut filling in for Hamish just for a little bit just to keep his stream going that little bit longer. I know a few of us in a discord that Hamish and I are in have wanted Hamish's streams to go on a little bit longer but there's only so much time in the day so really appreciate um, you guys hanging around and bearing with me. So <laughs> hi Honor, Honor. Um, GS, um, CA Berlitz, Carlos, how are you doing? And also Hamish himself, thank you ever so much. So, like Hamish and I have been talking about, we've been looking at um, Zombie Side, and it's a great game, it's a real fun game. And I think it's definitely worth being my number one game as well. Uh, I've had a great deal of fun playing that with a few friends and with family as well. Um, I am super jealous over the fact that Hamish has the, the what one was it, the Horde? <laughs> I hope to be a very good companion to, to Hamish. You, you should get on sometime as well. Carlos, I think you would be a fantastic, not trying to take over Hamish's channel, but I think you, you would be a fantastic guest on the channel, so you should do it sometime. Green Horde, that's it, Green Horde is, re looks really, really good and I wouldn't mind having that. And now I'm probably going to be looking at the Plague one as well. So, um, thanks Hamish, I probably will be spending a lot more money than I initially planned. Right, so we're going to do a little bit of airbrushing today. And just quick disclaimer, I am in no way an expert airbrusher. This is all stuff that I've learned myself. Um, but I will, for anyone willing to learn, I'll go over some things. So, Feel free to ask any questions at all, anytime. So, first thing I do is I make sure that I've got it switched on, which I do. And let me know if the if the noise is too too much. Hi, Asterica Oracles. Very good to have you on. Thank you. Yes, yeah, a lot more money than initially planned. So, it's amazing some of us don't starve. So, first thing I do when I get my airbrush out is I just get a little bit of H2O, a little bit of water, and I just put it in there just to make sure that I have actually cleaned it. And if my hand is wet, then it's a good sign. Um, and that's quite good. So, what I'm going to be doing now, there are a lot of zombies. I've actually got twice as many as this actual tray. So I don't want to be spending too much time painting individual ones. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a quick base coat on all of these miniatures today with just a grey and that is in order to get so that later on I'll be able to put, use the contrast paints, the GW contrast paints to get them painted up really really quickly. What I'll do is I'll start with some of the fatties as well because there's a lot of flesh on those. And the wonderful thing about the GW contrast paints is the the flesh is just really really easy to do. So I'm just going to start with those for now. Okay, so we're going to do some mixing too. Um, first of all, I'm going to mix in the cup, which is not what I usually do. I normally mix separately. But we'll go in the cup for now. So I'm going to be using the contrast base paint. Forgot, got my uh, my paint shaker. Which Hamish was very kind enough to join me on video for that. So that's a nicey shook up. Oh, I wish there was, and if there was a, a super handsome gentleman north of the border to uh, to help out as well. Paint shaker review would be good, Hamish, I agree. Oh, 
thank you Hamish, very kind. So there's two things that I add to paint when I'm airbrushing and I hope you can see them. I know the image is probably reversed, I can't flip it over for some reason. But we've got the airbrush flow improver and the airbrush thinner. And a lot of people have asked what are the difference between the two and I was one of those people who asked it. It turns out the airbrush thinner literally is just like a medium for that you have with normal paints. So it's quite useful to add that in. The flow improver actually prevents the everything from drying out. So it's kind of like a lengthens of time that it takes for the paint to dry. And the reason you want that is because when you're pushing air through the nozzle, what you'll find is eventually that air will dry the nozzle out. And that's something that you don't want. So we add a little bit of flow improver and apparently washing up liquid or dish soap does exactly the same thing but don't quote me on that hi age you aunt I hope I've said that right <laughs> right so I'm just gonna put that to one side and the other thing that I like to use as well is a glove otherwise I will get paint all over my hands all good <laughs> hi Katerina so yeah I will get paint all over my hand forget about it and then I'll start touching my face and then I'll basically have war paint on now another thing I'll do as well is just putting the finger over the front and gently pulling back and you'll see some bubbles that helps mix the paint because even though know I have the brush I'm not necessarily getting right to the bottom and we want to have it well mixed this reminds me of like um, blowing bubbles in your milkshake when you're a kid or an adult because some adults do that too decent airbrush to get um, not these ones oddly enough um, the Awatas and the Badgers are meant to be fantastic however I am a cheapskate so I tend to buy um, cheap airbrushes from Amazon which isn't necessarily a bad thing because um, like I say I mostly use the airbrushes for base painting and for detail work now um, if you want a good airbrush for canvas work and actual art then yes go for an Oata but um, last night I was actually practicing on a canvas with some of the new brushes that I got again I've done a video review of that recently um, and they're absolute garbage to be perfectly yes don't use a, a badger to airbrush um, <laughs> It reminds me of that video that I sent you yesterday, Hamish, you know, the one with the um, the orange. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> we had a big laugh about that. Now, unfortunately, you're probably not going to be able to see this very well because it literally is the same colour as the Mini. But... Like I say, that is primed. And that is a hell of a lot quicker than anything I can do with a brush. And even I'm going to have to keep count of which ones are primed and which ones I haven't. Now, can you hear the, the motor going off at all? Just let me know if you can. Okay, you can hear the spraying. That's prob that's that's kind of expected. So that's okay. Is the spraying a problem? Okay, good. I mean, it's not like you have much of a choice because I don't think I'd actually be able to paint without the spraying.
I like to say I'm just basically getting this to a quick base coat. Because we'll be going straight on with the contrast paints next. So something else you might be noticing as well, you can, I've actually got a dual action airbrush and dual action means that basically you push down for air and you pull back for the spray. Now I do watch quite a lot of airbrush videos because there's a lot of things that I want to learn more and one of the videos that I watch a lot of is a YouTuber called Airbrush Asylum and he always says that you should always have air going through. Um, and I'm actually quite lucky because I managed to accidentally break this airbrush to a point where as soon as I press down it's constantly spraying air and then all I need to do is basically move it back and forth to actually release the paint. Um, it's not supposed to be like that but it's worked out in my favour. So if I work out how to break an airbrush again I'll let everyone know and then maybe release my own way. Yes, Jay, yes, it can sometimes clog the detail of the Mini. I'm actually working with a very thin base at the moment. And, like I say, this is all about a very quick um, a quick paint job. The other thing that happens as well is because I've got the constant flow of air, it's actually um, drying it's a lot quicker as well. So I'm using the air of the airbrush to actually dry the paint. But it's like I say, very thin layers that I'm working on at the moment. Okay. What I'm going to do next is I'm just going to get a skin tone ready and I've got a couple, I normally use Gilliman Flesh for everything. So I've actually got two here, um, we got Gilliman Fresh. Yeah. Gulliman Flesh, not Fresh, and also Darko Flesh. So, I'm going to leave it up to you. Which one should I use for the skin of the zombie? So, the Darko one, I don't know how well you can see it, it looks a bit more purpley. don't know how well that turns out. Yeah. I think I'll agree with you there, Hamish. Um, yeah, because we also have the heroes to do. Yeah, the purple. Cool. Okay, what we'll do, we'll try it on the fatty first. I'm hoping fatty is actually what these are called, and it's not just something that my local group just call them. Keep forgetting to use my paint shaker. Yeah, I find that as well, Hamish. You see, no, the paint shaker is coming invaluable for these um, contrast paints because the contrast paints seem to need a lot more shaking than you'd expect. Okay, let's see. If 
and that's mixed up quite nicely. I'm just trying to work out whether he's wearing a wife beater vest as well now. Which he probably is. They do say one thick coat for this. I like the way he looks like he's wearing like big rubber gloves as well so I might take advantage of that and make him look like he's wearing a pair of marigolds or something else. Yeah it's, it's, it's one of the benefits of uh, of have, having the airbrush you can just get through stuff really really quickly. I hate batch painting. If so, J Star, thank you for the question as well. Um, there is one compressor that I tend to recommend, and it's luck of the draw when you actually get it because um, it's the AS186, is the one that I personally have, and I think it's a fantastic airbrush. Uh, sorry, a, compre a fantastic compressor, I should say. Now, um, oddly enough, my number one video on my channel is a review of that and I've done quite a few um, videos of it too, one more recently with an update. Now with the price of it I paid £80 UK and what I got with that was a compressor, a hose and two airbrushes and absolutely brilliant. I have seen them recently going for around about 120 but I have also seen them going down to around about 50, and 50 sometimes. So it's luck of the draw really. Um, with that particular compressor as well, you just get everything that you need to get yourself started. So £80 is where I would probably draw the line. With regards to the airbrushes, like I say, if you just want to do simple stuff like base coating, you can do some effects with a cheap airbrush as well. Um, just get for the cheap airbrushes. If you want to do some canvas work, and to be honest, canvas work is something that I really want to do, um, you need to start spending money. And my wish list is going to be an Iwata airbrush. Um, just to give an idea, last night I was actually doing some canvas work, and I, all I wanted to do was basically just spray the black the back of the canvas black and as you can see it's probably patchy it looks awful um, and it's not like I never used an airbrush before and I know I can do a much better job than that but I was using the new airbrush that I got and it was just awful so I am gonna start looking at saving my pennies and getting a good one Thank you Hamish, really appreciate that. So what I'm going to do once I've got the skin done, um, it looks like he's wearing jeans or workman trousers so I might switch to a space wolf grey which is which looks like really good as a denim material in my opinion. Spray booth. I don't have a spray booth. That's all I'm saying. Um, inside work, it's 
basically whatever you're putting through the the airbrush a lot of people have spray who have spray booths are using um, automotive paints which are toxic a lot of people worry about particles um, what I tend to put through it is the Games Workshop stuff and the Vallejo stuff which as I understand it is non-toxic having said that I wouldn't have the animals in the room with me so I've got two dogs and whenever I'm doing airbrushing I will make sure they're out which they don't understand why daddy doesn't want them to be in the room with him while he's airbrushing but um, yeah um, what a spray booth does it's one of those things that I probably would like to have um, and I've got a decent sized room that I do my hobbying in but I've never felt the need to have one yeah um, I think mo to be honest with you the the people who make the paints know that they have to make non-toxic stuff I know the P3 ones definitely aren't the Vallejo ones because they do know that people do lick the brushes so most hobby paints are non-toxic but when I've been looking at other paints that I want to use with my airbrush what I find I'm being drawn to is actually automotive paints um, and any paint that needs to be strong enough to withstand the elements <laughs> um, is going to have some sort of chemicals in it in order to make it durable so I would not recommend licking the same paint as your uh, as your Fiat Punto because basically you'd be licking the same sort of thing I think there's quite a few people guilty of brush licking so I wouldn't do it with, with uh, contrast paints because contrast paints taste awful I know that from experience Yeah, no, I, no, I, I appreciate that. Um, I mean, I'm lucky in that I've got a dedicated room for me to do my hobby, and um, my wife does come in here, but she's not responsible for this room at all. So I'm kind of lucky in that respect. Do you need a spray booth? To be honest with you, a cardboard box will do the same thing if you want to do if you want to do that. If you've got a decent sized cardboard box and you don't if you don't want spray everywhere then yeah just get a cardboard box you'll do the same thing okay I'm loving these zombies with the dresses so I think I'm gonna give all these zombie with dresses different colors so one of the things that I do like painting is um, cloaks and anything that's got kind of like folds in it or anything because it's, it's one of those easy, easy things that you can just make look really nice really quickly and that's whether you're using contrast or not so you can very easily just use the contrast paints and it does it all, all the work for you or you can just spend some time Xenophil highlights and so so on. Thank you ever so much, Asteria Oracles. Really appreciate you coming, sticking around. Take care. The other cool thing about being able to stream on Hamish's channel is I actually get um, goblin doubloons for watching myself which is cool and just want to warn the Hamish that I'm close to that 10k so I'm still waiting for that option to have Hamish say something nice about West Ham on his live stream which I will redeem once it's there
Yeah, it's... Yeah, Leicester... Unfortunately, we've got um, Declan Rice and, An and Antonio injured. Antonio, not too worried about, but we do need his physicality to get past Michael. And I will do my best not to talk too much about football, because I know not everyone's into it. It does feel like, um, yeah, a, a certain t red team in Manchester have kind of dangled the carrot by putting Jesse Lingard in our team. But to be honest with you, if he's going to go, he'll, he'll go to Chelsea. I don't think... Although he would easily be first name on this, well, one of the top names on the team sheet if he was in Man at Man U. Oh, I'm trying to work out. I'm not too sure what this because this she's got a dress. Almost looks like either thigh high boots or stockings. I'm not too sure what she's wearing. I'm going to pretend it's her legs. I think there's another level of detail I need to do to differentiate the different types of zombies as well because you've got the regular slow lumbering zombies and then you've got the, um, the, the fast ones and then the, the larger ones as well. So I might have to do something with the base to actually differentiate because if I've got people coming around who have not played zombie side before might make it make things a little bit easier for them although I am hoping that um, Hamish will be able to get down here and and play a few games with me or I go up to him who knows Yeah, I do that. I I do the different color bases with pretty much all my board games. So when I painted the um, the Fallout minis, um, anything that the player uses had a blue base, and everything that was considered an enemy or an in-game element had a red base. And I thought that worked really well. So and I've kind of done the same thing with the alien miniatures so I've gone full red base with all the bad guys and I don't have any good guys to show you they're probably all put away somewhere oh no and then I've got Ripley with the blue and again it's probably not coming up very well on my cam so apologies yeah <clears throat> I'm all about colour coordination um, and I'm going to have to look into what it was that Fallout did, Modifius did, to make it easy for colorblind people. Because 
I remember it as something that stuck out instantly. I think it literally they they numbered things or whatever, but they wanted to make it easy and accessible, and that's one of the things that I really liked about the Fallout game. And I would expect it would be a common theme that they put in. Um, other things they have. So the skins come along really nicely on that. I'm going to start with this fatty and I'm going to switch over to Space Wolf Grey, which I know it's used for knocking together Space Wolf very quickly, but for me it makes a very nice light denim colour. Just to show you as well, um, that is the sediment, the pigment. I don't know whether it's just because I use my paint shaker way too much, particularly on this paint. It's helped a hell of a lot. And it's pretty much all gone in no time whatsoever. You can see a little bit there, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's something, like I say, it's something I have to think about um, when I'm designing software because the company that I work for is they're very big in the whole um, making sure that people feel included and one of the things that I have to take into consideration when I'm building GUIs which is graphical user interfaces is can we resize the text for people who find it difficult to to read um, and also having a colorblind mode because and purely because one of the guys that I work with suffers from quite bad colorblind color blindness and he has, has to have everything in a in a contrast in a like reverse contrast mode on his screen yeah the paint mix is fantastic isn't it so I just love, I don't know how well that's coming out on here. I really need new webcams. But I will actually po take some photos and post them on Twitter if anyone's interested, just so I can show the, the denim effect that Space Wolf Grey has. I think it's great. I think I will do two coats on these particular models though because it's still a bit too light for my liking so once I get around to it again second coat should sort it out So hopefully soon we'll have lockdown ending and I'll be able to play this with my friends again and I'm sure they'll really like playing with actual painted minis. The character models I think I'm going to spend a little bit more time on. Um, I've actually got a work colleague who is a massive zombie side fan and I think they've actually, he, I know his group actually make their own characters so they've actually made themselves in the game unfortunately as I said they're still using the existing ones as proxies but rather than having like I was saying earlier on Hamish's stream you have Wanda as a fast one they might have one of their um, friends who used to do running at high school as a fast one but um, when when I got a 3D printer last year what he was doing was asking me to 3D print minis for him 
for Zombicide. And I think it's got to the point now that he's actually um, going on like the websites such as Hero Forge and Desktop Heroes to make his own minis for Zombicide now as well. So rather, so even though they play with all the zombies, what they're actually having themselves characterised in the actual game, which I think is fantastic. Um, but he plays board games a lot, a lot more than anyone I actually know. Okay, so we have zombies wearing suits. So I am actually going to go with a grey colour for two reasons. I don't want to go full on black, and I've never actually used my grey contact contrast paints. So I'm going to do two of them with basili basilicanum grey. That's mixed up beautifully. <laughs> it's starting to become like a, a little chore thing, isn't it? It's like, oh, I better mix my paints. I haven't mixed my paints today. The thing is, your paints will last for years now. There'll be um, archaeologists thousands of years from now. They're going to dig up Hamish's paints. We found another miniature painter. <laughs> yes, Terminator Stone. Um, I don't even know if I have term Terminator Stone. Is it? A, is it a dry paint? Oh, no, I do have it. Yep, I got some myself, so... Yeah, we all stick around for you and your Terminator Stone. I'm not sure how I feel about this bit of sil silicanum grey. I suppose it's, it's one of those things where you don't know with contrast paints until they're actually dry. So the jacket looks good, but the, the trousers look awful. Thank you, Honor GS. Yeah, um, that's the beauty of the contrast paints. Um, like I say, I absolutely hate batch painting, so having the ability to do stuff quickly is really, really useful. I've been speaking to Hamish about the fact that I've been trying to build skeletons, so I've got a massive backlog, like most miniature painters. Um, and I'm trying to get through the skeletons first because I know they're just going to be an absolute pain. Um, and I know once I finish building it, I'm just going to be... It's its just going to be a case of build them, spray paint them <laughs> with, with the, with the um, airbrush and try and get through it as quickly as possible. Yes, yes. Um, when I first got back into miniature painting, I was terrified of painting anything in flesh, hence the reason why I went um, Order of Death when I got back into it. And there was, because I wanted to save a few pounds, I decided I wasn't going to use the plastic glue that they provide. 
or suggest I use and I was just going to use super glue and not only had I managed to glue skeletons to myself I'd actually managed to glue myself to myself on many occasions including gluing myself to my phone at the time so I had my phone actually glued to my hand for a bit that took a bit of um, elbow grease to get off Oh, someone's redeemed a random fact. Um, I was not prepared for this whatsoever, so random fact. <laughs> that was a very good question. <laughs> I'm hoping that, hoping that Hamish will have a random fact. Although I, I do have one. Yeah, he came he's gonna jump in and save me, but I think I'll jump in with one as well. So in my random fact, um it, once again this is going back to football and it's my main thing. I am a huge West Ham United fan, so hammers all day long. And a lot of people say, but you don't sound very cockney. And what it was, was I, am, I was born in London, in West London, in Hammersmith Hospital. So I always felt that you had to support your local team. So I just assumed that West Ham stood for West London in Hammersmith Hospital. So I became a West Ham fan. It was only much later when I grew up and realised that West Ham is actually on the other side of London. It's the same thing. However, my grandfather was actually born a stone's throw from um, Upton Park, which is where they used to play. So he is actually from Newham. Um, he doesn't sound like he's from Newham because he was born during just 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 before the war and he was actually evacuated to uh, Cambridgeshire um, so he learned the Queen's English growing up which um, led to him having all sorts of really good jobs because he was in the Metropolitan Police so he used to work at Buckingham Palace with the Queen um, you also got to do a lot of security on high profile cases like the I can't remember what it's called but it's the Christine Keeler he actually was bodyguard for or security for Christine Keeler when there was a major scandal going on Christine Keeler was a lady who was she was having an affair with a British politician and someone at the Russian Embassy during the height of the Cold War, as, as I understand it. And sadly, he is suffering from dementia now. He's my only surviving grandparent, but I love him to bits because he's got a wicked sense of humour, probably where I get mine from. And he's got so many amazing stories. And I do recommend if your grandparents are still alive, ask them for their stories because they have just gone through a lot more than what a lot of us can imagine. That was very somber, I do apologise. So. Okay, yeah, I want to hear your fact. Pigeons die after mating. I hope not because I literally have pigeon's nests right outside my window. Um, and I don't particularly want to have any dead pigeons in my yard.
right, so I've done four of these guys. I'm now moving on to the ladies, and the ladies have beautiful dresses, so I'm going to play around with a few different colours this time. Okay, um... Just so you know, every single paint has a place in my room and I know where every single one goes um, and I am a big stickler for putting them back when I use them. So I'm going to try a few different things with the dresses and skirts. Um, I'm going to try Griffhound Orange again because I've never used it before. That's quite heavily segmented as well, so let's see how, the, how well this does. Thanks, Errol. Erzl rules. Okay, so we're going to give a lady an orange dress, which is probably a really, really bad idea, as I used to work in fashion retail and orange never sells. Which is probably why she got zombified instead. Oh, she's wearing like a cardigan as well, so... See one that's not wearing a cardigan. Ah, oh, no, I'm just going to do it. Um, orange dress and a white cardi, I think. I actually love how the orange is going on. I'm not loving the fact that it's on a dress, but it does look really... I just love the way the contrast paints work sometimes. <laughs> um, it is Griffhound Orange. So it's quite an interesting colour. Um, again, I think it's coming out a lot nicer in real life than it is on the cam. So I do need to get a better cam. It's it's really nice. It's really nice. It's the first time I've opened that on up as well. So this is me taking advantage of the fact that I'm trying out paints that I've never tried before. But the other one I'm going to be doing is Yandan Yellow. Um, again, never actually tried it, so I'm using the zombies as an experimentation. Very summer dressy. shaker to the rescue. Alright, let's try this yellow on a similar. Right, this one I think it's going to be a case of see how it looks once it's dry. That seems okay.
think next up I've got pink and I've got purple again never been used Let's try Volpus Pink. Looks like a very dark pink, but it should be nice. This one's kind of like a, a plum colour. Just makes me think of plum jam. But it's almost like um, Screamer Pink from the GW range as well. You have infinite goblin doubloons. <laughs> um, shout out for my channel. So anyone who is watching and doesn't know already, um, I actually run a YouTube channel called Geek Curio. And um, in that it's basically I cover miniature painting airbrushing, reviews, um, role playing stuff, the house is clean. Be my guest. <laughs> okay I realise that Hamish is now just um, spamming everything. <laughs> Be my guest. Um, Alternatively, you could do where I'd say something nice about Manchester United. <laughs> That's a not a bad idea, actually. Yeah. Okay, so let's see how these are coming along. Um, the Space Wolf Grey on the jeans looks all right. I think it's um, going to be a case of I might just do a few extra layers on some of them just so I got different denim patterns but other than that it's looking okay and I'd probably do they've got like a jumper tied around their waist so I can play around once again I can just change the colors up to whatever I like which will be great what you can do Hamish, you can do like a, um, you know, when Gollum's talking to himself. What has it got in its pockets? Is Master really likes us, Master so good. I don't like any nasty chipses. I like my food fresh and wriggly. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was actually going to do I'm going to do some yellow on the fatties, um, gloves make it look like marigolds but what I might do is I might actually go over with a non-contrast paint such as um, Avalon Sunset because I have actually had a bit of overspill but I do think it will be hilarious to have this really tough dangerous zombie 
coming towards you with a pair of marigolds on as if he's just been doing the uh, doing the washing up thanks Hamish oh I didn't realize the time um, I am actually gonna finish the stream for now so thank you everyone who has turned up and um, I'll speak to you all soon so take care stay safe and take care bye bye